from classic and creepy mansions harboring restless spirits resulting from gruesome murders long past, to quaint and quiet house museums where it's said the dead roam after dark. Are you ready for our second list of picks for some of the most haunted murder houses in the United States? Number 5. The Campbell House the Campbell House, located off West First Avenue in Spokane, Washington, is a historic home turned museum that's recognized as a shining example of early 20th century decor. Historically, the dwelling was first constructed in 1898 by architect Kirtland Cutter for one Amasa B. Campbell, his wife Grace, and their daughter Helen. But following the passing of Amasa in 1912 and of Grace in 1924, Helen would gift the property to the Eastern Washington State Historical Society, now referred to as the Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture. Eventually, the home's contents were auctioned off and in 1926, it was transformed into a public museum. In 1960, restorations were launched in an effort to reclaim the house's original appearance, as well as to track down many of its original furnishings. The Campbell House remains open to the public as part of the Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture, and in recent times has picked up quite the reputation for its purported paranormal activity. Though it's been highly debated by historians and scholars, a prominent legend tells the Campbells had more children than what's recorded in the books, and that one night through the early 1900s, an intruder broke in, murdering three of them and abducting another who was never located. Many visiting the home have reported encounters with the small spirits of these children, and passers-by have described hearing tiny, heart-wrenching screams emanating from within. Inside the Campbell house, both staff and guests have reported otherworldly noises from empty rooms, disembodied voices and footsteps, and a sudden and overwhelming sense of dread. Lastly, a notable portrait on site displays the likeness of Amasa himself, and many who pass by it swear the eyes follow. Number 4. The Rison House Museum the Rison House Museum, located off 6th Street in Heritage Square out of Phoenix, Arizona, is a historic abode turned museum that's widely recognized as a near-perfect example of early brick architecture through the city. Historically, the property was purchased by Dr. Roland Rison in 1882, with he and his family inhabiting an earlier structure already on site before, in 1895, constructing the house we know today. In 1897, the Rison family would sell the property to Aaron and Carrie Goldberg, who would bird their third child within the home. In 1904, the Goldbergs would sell the old dwelling to one Stephen W. Higley, and in 1914, the site would be sold yet again to the Gamble family, who would operate a boarding house out of the age structure until 1948, after which they would throw it back onto the market. The old property would change hands numerous times over the years before eventually falling into disrepair and subsequently being sold off to the city in 1974. In the present, the Rison House has been fully restored and remains open to the public, with options available for guided tours. According to local legend, this popular museum may just be haunted by the spirits of its many former owners and residents. Through the 1980s, a caretaker was actually murdered on site, and both visitors and staff have reported a range of inexplicable activity, including disembodied footsteps heard going up and down staircases, doors and objects sighted moving on their own, and the sounds of someone shuffling about heard emanating from empty spaces. Supernatural activity is said to get strongest at night, when staff members have recounted fireplaces literally igniting on their own. Lastly, the full-bodied entity of the caretaker killed so long ago has been known to manifest suddenly, surprising those nearby. Number 3. The Villa Casa Casarina at the former Versace Mansion 
The Villa Casa Casarina at the former Versace Mansion, located off Ocean Drive on Miami Beach in Florida, is a five-star hotel famous for its staging within the former abode of legendary Italian fashion designer Gianni Versace. Historically, the mansion was constructed in 1930 by one Alden Freeman as a 24-unit apartment complex, where he would reside on its top floor in the front apartment on the southeast corner, while reserving the remaining rooms for his friends and family or even renting them out to sustain his lifestyle. Following Freeman's passing in 1937, the property was turned over to several different owners and tenants until its purchase by Gianni Versace in 1992, after which it would undergo an extensive slew of renovations and would eventually be turned from apartments into a 10-suite mansion. On July 15th of 1997, tragically, Versace was murdered by spree killer Andrew Cunanan on the front porch while on his morning walk, after which the house sat empty for three years before being sold in the year 2000. In 2013, the Victor Hotels Group purchased the property, transforming it into a luxury lodging. The villa remains open to this day and is recognized for preserving a wealth of Versace's original decor. As legend has it, the whole of the prestigious premises is inhabited by the spirit of the man himself, Versace, who some say sought out the site at which he was most happy in life, and those who have felt his presence describe it as calming, tranquil, and peaceful. This old palace has long been surrounded by rumors of hidden passageways, secret codes, trap doors, and even whispers of some sort of time capsule, and several informal investigations have yielded orbs and photographs, crystal clear EVPs, disembodied footsteps, and extreme temperature fluctuations. Lastly, an encounter across the grounds are reports of objects moving on their own, doors locking and unlocking by themselves, knocking and strange noises heard from within the walls, the sounds of someone or something moving about inside of closets, and the constant feeling of being watched or followed. Number 2. The Los Feliz Murder Mansion the Los Feliz Murder Mansion, also known as the Perlson Mansion, is a Spanish revival located off Glendower Place in the Los Feliz neighborhood of Los Angeles, California, that's widely infamous for a brutal murder-assault-suicide that occurred on site. Historically, the mansion was first constructed in 1925, and later, through the 1950s, one Dr. Harold Perlson, along with his wife and three children, would move on to the property. Chillingly, on the night of December 6th in 1959, Harold struck his wife to death with a hammer, beat his 18-year-old daughter severely, and then took his own life by way of overdose. A year later, the abode was purchased by Emily and Julian Enriquez, who utilized it only as storage. In 1994, the couple's son, Rudy Enriquez, would inherit the house and would leave it untouched until his passing in 2015, after which, in 2016, it was sold to a couple who launched a series of extensive renovations. In 2019, the Los Feliz Murder Mansion was placed back on the market and remains up for sale to this day. Very few have had the chance to actually view the interior of this old home, and it's not open to the general public. But over the years, a string of stories of encounters from those fortunate enough to gain a glimpse, and also from passers-by, have entailed orbs in the backgrounds of photographs, otherworldly noises from empty rooms, and the constant feeling of being watched or followed. Not surprisingly, one more popular tale tells the grounds are, in fact, haunted by the spirits of both Mr. and Mrs. Perelson, and many have described hearing the disembodied sounds of arguing, of a woman shrieking no, and of a grisly beating from the dormant old palace. Faces and forms have been spied through the windows, and the prominent image of a woman thought to be that of Mrs. Perlson herself has been known to materialize to visitors, glaring at them intensely for moments before fading away. 
Lastly, an encounter to cross the property are doors that open and close on their own, the sounds of footsteps stomping back and forth, and lights flickering from on to off in the middle of the night when the place is closed and locked. Number 1. The Mercer Williams House Museum the Mercer Williams House, located off of Bowl Street on the corner of Monterey Square in Savannah, Georgia, is a historic home turned museum that's grown wildly in both infamy and recognition for acting as scene to a brutal murder, one that's since been depicted in the book Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Barron. Construction of this abode was started in 1860 under order of General Hugh Mercer, and though the process was stalled for a time by the Civil War, the home would be finally finished in 1868 under new ownership of one John R. Wilder. Through the 20th century, the home would host the Savannah Shriners Ali Temple until its abandonment in 1959, after which it would sit empty for a time, until 1969 when one James Williams would make purchase and would spend the following two years fully restoring the should-be prestigious old property. Upon James's death in 1990, his sister Dorothy Kingry would take over ownership and manages the old site to this day. The Mercer Williams House Museum remains open to the public, offering tours to any with an interest. Over its lengthy existence, a number of chilling stories surrounding this aged abode have emerged. In 1969, an 11-year-old boy by the name of Tommy Downs fell from the roof and was impaled on an iron fence located off the southern side of the house. While at the time this was chalked up to an accident that transpired while the youth was chasing birds, some claim it looked as if someone had pushed Tommy from cover in an attempt to disguise his fate. Another popular story tells that on May 2nd of 1981, 21-year-old Daniel Lewis Hansford was shot and killed on the property during a dispute with his employer and lover, none other than James Williams himself. Williams was later arrested, but after four trials, was acquitted. Across the property, many have reported orbs in the backgrounds of photographs, full-bodied apparitions sighted through windows, and even the sounds of ghostly parties long past. The small spirit of Tommy has been known to manifest on the roof, replaying his final moments, with his fall looking so real it's resulted in numerous calls to the authorities, who always arrive to find the ground where he should have impacted completely clear, and the area calm and quiet. Lastly, on January 14th of 1990, just eight months after his acquittal, James Williams died spontaneously and without cause. The full-bodied apparitions of both James Williams and Danny Hansford have been sighted roaming the property, leading some to speculate that it was actually Hansford's vengeful spirit that did old Jimmy in. Taking in the consideration its dark and intriguing history, and coupling it with a list of ghost stories, purported hauntings, and urban legends a mile long, we felt the Mercer Williams House Museum was a rich pick as the most haunted murder house in the United States. Thanks for tuning in for our second list of picks for some of the most haunted murder houses in the United States. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on. Throw us a like, and most importantly, share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.